The Twitter files are extremely important because they confirm what we are respected, that Twitter's middle management worked hand in glove with Democrats to shut down the Hunter Biden story. Interview. Where is the proof of that? Link the tweet that proved that. He has, you're on Twitter, and he was reported on Twitter. Link the tweet that showed that. They had no basis for that shutdown. Why not read what they actually said? It's literally linked in the Twitter threads. This is what I'm saying. This is why conservatives lie when they say we just want transparency information. No, you don't. You just want to be able to spin a fucking narrative. Engage with the actual material. Why not link? Why would you waste your time writing this whole stupid fucking Twitter thread when you can just link to the actual fucking conversation and show me where it says that? You can't walk around with a party member full of insane fucking people that think that Hillary Clinton murdered that Seth Rich guy, that think that the, they'd had people with rifles showing up to that pizza restaurant because they thought kids were being held in the basement for satanic rituals. You can't have all of those people on your side and not have to answer for them. It's arguably the defining features of your movement. The defining features of MAGA Republicans are, are fucking QAnon and Seth Rich. 23% of Republicans believe Satan worshiping pedophiles control the U.S. government. Okay, we're reading this, okay? Is um, your best friend? What? Lex is your best friend. Um, I hope so, unless the bridge burns. We're about to find out. Hey all, I've been a fan of Lex for around a year now. As a comp sci student, I appreciate his work as a professional AI researcher, an engineer, professor, and a communicator. The recent Twitter files saga has been quite an interesting experience. The transparency is a breath of fresh air. However, I have a few disagreements with the general take Lex seems to have with it. A Twitter thread by Matt Taibbi, a journalist, was published on December or in December 2nd, 2022, known as the Twitter Files, which details a story of censorship within Twitter of both the censoring of New York Post's Hunter Biden laptop story and various deleted tweets. Part one, the censoring of New York Post's Hunter Biden laptop story. Typo. For those unaware or not entirely up to date, the controversy can be read about here. In short, Twitter and Facebook both initially censored this story just weeks before the 2020 U.S. presidential election. The reasoning included that more than 50 former senior officials have signed on to a letter outlining their belief that the recent disclosure of emails allegedly belonging to Hunter Biden has all the classic earmarks of a Russian dis or information operation. Twitter was said to be on high alert due to the vast amount of Russian disinformation pushed during the 2016 presidential election. Additionally, it was claimed that the story violated their hacked materials policy, and fact checkers were originally unable to confirm the authenticity of the emails at the time, though it was not disputed by the Biden campaign. Jack Dorsey, who was the CEO of Twitter at the time, was reportedly unaware of the censorship of the New York Post story. Eventually, the story was allowed to be posted on Twitter, though it was after the election was over. Jack Dorsey has said that he regrets the censorship of the story and that the handling of the situation was freelance with no evidence of the government being involved to censor the story. There was internal fighting within Twitter as to whether or not the story should be censored and if the hack material policy actually applies here. The main takeaways from this section are, one, Twitter was on high alert due to Russian meddling in the 2016 U.S. Pres presidential election and concerns from former senior officials, so Twitter erred on the side of caution. Two, Twitter's stated reason has to do with attack materials policy, though the validity was contested internally. Three, there is no evidence of a government involvement in the censoring of the story. And four, there was internal conflict as to whether or not the story should be censored. In general, no new information about the censorship of the story was revealed, except that it was a freelance decision without the knowledge of Jack Dorsey. The censorship seemed to have been a case of better safe than sorry, with the hack materials policy being the external justification. The censorship was not a result of government involvement, and there was internal conflict as to whether or not the story should even be censored. So this was the first part. So if you read through Matt's um, leaked tweets, um, they tried to make this sound like as salacious as possible, doing like one tweet every 50 fucking minutes because this guy is either the slowest fucking typer or for some reason they didn't type up the thread first. But um, this was true. There was no government intervention there was no evidence of foul play. There was no evidence of external pressure. And the hacked materials policy was indeed the internal and external reason that they went for with censoring the story because they weren't able to verify or validate where the um, files came from. Full stop. Any conservative saying this was a bombshell or it exposed some huge um, foul play or whatever, show me where. Show me, show me where. Because they don't exist. All of the tweets that were linked here and here, oh, the censorship of various tweets, 
Oh, also, let me give you a little back there. Link the tweet that proved that. He has, you're on Twitter, and he was reported on Twitter. Link the tweet that showed that. They had no basis for that shutdown. Why not read what they actually said? It's literally linked in the Twitter threads. This is what I'm saying. This is why conservatives lie when they say we just want transparency information. No, you don't. You just want to be able to spin a fucking narrative. Engage with the actual material. Why not link? Why would you waste your time writing this whole stupid fucking Twitter thread when you can just link to the actual fucking conversation and show me where it says that? Why would you have to give your stupid fucking spin on it? Link where it says it. Like, it's, this is actually, like, unreal. Like, what the fuck? All the tweets that were linked here and here were censored on behalf of the DNC, though both parties had access to tools that allowed them to flag tweets. Every single linked tweet contained explicit content as it relates to Hunter Biden, although the fourth link in the first set of tweets could not be found. Given the explicit nature of these images, they could be seen in the sources section below. It is understandable that Twitter would censor them specifically. Conservatives just really wanted to see Hunter's fucking cock, his throbbing BWC. That's what they wanted to see. They wanted, they wanted Hunter to flop his BWC out and grab his crack pipe so they could just fucking jerk it to his fucking images. That's what they wanted to see. I think it wanted to gauge response on each two. Uh, yes, yes, and Biden wasn't in government office. Trump was. The whole hilarious gaffe from the spell said Biden wasn't in office and Trump was. Oh, sure. But they're going to say that Biden is still controlling the world because the DNC and the Democrats control everything behind the scenes anyway. It doesn't matter if they're in office or not. Given that no other tweets were linked, it can be reasonably concluded that the censoring of these tweets had less to do with censoring the Hunter Biden laptop story and more to do with censoring nudes of Hunter Biden. The issue is the DNC and RNC can make requests like this with no oversight. What, what oversight? What do you mean? It's, a pri it's one private company making a request to another private company to delete information. What is the oversight that you're looking for? Twitter has a right to review the requests. Twitter has a right to take the requests. And Twitter has a right to, to either accept or deny. And, it's, and that's all Twitter's uh, processes. Like, what do you mean? Does RNC and DNC count as private companies? Yeah, of course, they're not government entities. Or are they extensions of the government? No, they're, they're private political parties. To be clear, Elon has been eyeing to release the ship since before he even came on board. Yeah, of course. Because he has no, he's so, fuck. He's actually so clueless on this shit. Or he's just a right-wing shill. I can't figure out which one it is. I don't, I can't tell which one it is. But his handling of this is actually but unimaginably fucking crazy to me. Like, holy shit. The idea that Twitter is a digital public square holds merit, but as it is still a private company, they do not need to abide by the First Amendment. This applies to Twitter after Elon Musk acquired it as well, with his refusal to unban Alex Jones, even though Jones, Alex Jones's speech did not directly incite violence, according to Elon Musk. Furthermore, the majority of the population believe that social media sites have a responsibility to prevent users from posting certain types of otherwise legal content. Those are some polls. <clears throat> Given the contradiction between the notion of Twitter being a digital public square and the public's view on how Twitter should moderate its content, it is fair to conclude that the public does not actually view Twitter as a digital uh, public square, but rather as a private company that has a responsibility to moderate its content. Furthermore, given Elon Musk's contradiction of Twitter serving as a de facto public town square, but his refusal to unban Alex Jones, it is fair to conclude that Elon does not believe that Twitter is a public town square, or Elon Musk is not a free speech absolutist. In Lex's first tweet, um, related to the Twitter files, he claims that the Twitter files release is historic and it will strengthen our democracy. While I agree it's historic and transparency will serve the public good, the Twitter files did not reveal anything groundbreaking. It has merely revealed a premature censorship of a story in which the employees did not quite know what to do with it. The idea that the Biden campaign would call on Twitter to delete tweets comprised of Hunter Biden's nudes should not be surprising to anyone. The idea that the government was not involved in the censorship of the New York Post story also diminishes the significance of this release. Let me repeat that. The idea that the government was not involved in the censorship of the New York Post story also diminishes greatly the significance of this release. However, I hope this does set a precedent and that Twitter will continue to be transparent. In another of Lex's tweets, he claims that the Twitter files saga continues to reveal abuses of power. Where? After the release of the Twitter files supplemental. This supplemental material introduces Jim Baker, now fired Twitter Deputy General Counsel and formal FBI General Counsel, Matt, uh, as reported by Matt Taibbi or whatever. As is stated by, I don't know how to pronounce the guy's name, Baker's history is controversial, whether he was defending 
the Patriot Act or when he was under investigation for allegedly leaking classified materials to the media during which he resigned. However, the Twitter files already claimed that there is no evidence of government involvement in the censorship of the New York Post story here. And the fact that a legal counsel in one field would be hired as another legal counsel in another should not come as a surprise. While it may be fair to claim that this is kind of an abuse of power, given the conclusions from earlier, the social media companies were on high alert for motion of disinformation. The New York Post story could not be verified for authenticity initially. The censorship of the New York Post was recklessly handled as opposed to maliciously. The censorship of the individual tweets linked to the Twitter files comprised of Hunter Biden's nudes, not any damning information about ties between Hunter Biden and Ukraine. I believe the more logical conclusion was that it was merely a mistake. They were too cautious in their handling of the story and they were too quick to censor it. This is not an abuse of power, but rather a mistake. A mistake that was arguably helped cover up by Twitter employees, but eventually resulted in Twitter's changing of their hacked materials policy to only issue a label or warning message, not removal of the tweet from Twitter and reduce visibility of the content. But anyway, if you see any conservative try to bring up that this was some like huge expose of like government corruption, I guess like our friend Benny Boy is doing here, they're either lying or they are just, they haven't read any of the material. Even he admits it's not government. Well, wait, did he admit it? Or was this that one snaky tweet where he was like, there's no clear evidence that it wasn't the government. Hold on. Although several sources recalled hearing about a general warning from federal law enforcement that summer about possible foreign hacks, there's no evidence that I've seen of any government involvement in the laptop story. In fact, that might have been the problem. Um, true. But yeah, that is true. I do remember reading this tweet. Destiny, one issue was that they were saying it was all Russian misinformation. They said it had the markers of Russian disinformation, which it did. When this proves the DNC and those handling and censor, involved in censoring it, the same people claiming it was Russia, knew it was real and not Russia. Fufarino, link me proof of that. Well, wait, you're in DGG chat. Link me proof of that. Link me proof of that. Link me proof that they knew that it was real and they still decided to censor it. I'll wait, because this whole Twitter thread exists, so go ahead and link me. How does a physical laptop sound like markers of Russian disinfo of Russian info? Be you're a conservative, bro, so you'll believe literally fucking anything, okay? If I tell you that I have photos of Hunter Biden drinking the blood of like six-year-old children, you'll say that sounds real. So to you, everything sounds real. When you're a conservative and you live in fucking fantasy land, everything sounds real. But to every other like normal thinking human being, the idea that Hunter Biden would drop off a laptop somewhere at some random shop and then forget it with a bunch of incriminating material on it, that sounds, that's a fantastic story. Not to say that that's not, it means it's necessarily false because apparently that is what happened, but that's that sounds like a fantastical story to any reasonable person. Destiny isn't engaging? I literally just engaged, you fucking brain-dead dipshit. See ya. Sick argument, Destiny, lol. Bye. See you later, dude. Go enjoy jerking off to fucking, like, deep fakes of Hillary Clinton drinking unicorn blood. Jesus, Destiny sounds like a partisan hack. Oh, Liz Patton. Did you think because you're a woman you wouldn't get that ass banned? Boom! See ya. Sorry. We're holding the conservative dipshits in my chat a little bit more accountable. You're gonna have to do a little bit better than, oh, you're a partisan hack, Destiny. Also, didn't you know Hunter Biden raped kids on the Burisma board with uh, Zelensky there watching as Soros promised that he would give all the money that was gonna go to our poor and uh, underserved communities uh, sent over to Ukraine to get bombs that were the Nazis were gonna use to bomb Russian citizens with their 100% gay Nazi army? Get the fuck out of you, fucking moron. If you have an argument, type it. If all you want to type is that I'm a partisan hack, while you are while you have your fucking like seventh set of knee pads that just came in because your other six have worn out from you on your knees sucking the dick of Trump, the fuck out of here. You type an actual fucking argument. Well, you can't because now you got that ass banned. Fucking moron. Destiny is so bad faith today. See ya. Boom. Caspi disappeared like the ghost you are, motherfucker. And I bet you got an outfit to match it. Did you see Lex's response to that post? Yep. 
Fufarino, we're still waiting for your link also. I didn't forget. I feel like one, you're downplaying the connection between the DNC and those who represent them in office, and two, while not an expert say, I highlighted this level of caution we've taken of the story was about someone on the right wing. Do you have any proof of that whatsoever? That if nudes were leaked of like Ivanka, you don't think those would be censored on Twitter? You're, you're inventing fictitious problems that you don't even know the answer would be. Also, every single person that is a big person has a direct line to Twitter to make these types of requests. I probably could through my talent agency. And I'm sure any big, like, fucking, um, I'm sure literally any large fucking figure or any large celeb probably can make the same types of requests. I want to be constructive. When you say, haha, conservatives would believe Hunter drinks dead kid's blood is really reductive and makes you seem like you don't have an argument. You have nothing. What are you talking about? Wasn't it like 35% of fucking Republicans actually believe in satanic ritual shit? I'm not, no, you have to, you have to accept the, the, the ramifications of the insane fucking shit your fellow party members believe. That's your fucking fault, okay? If I showed up to a, a, a group event with DGGers and 40% of them had fucking hoods, then yeah, that's some shit I'm going to expect to have to deal with. You can't walk around with a party member full of insane fucking people that think that Hillary Clinton murdered that Seth Rich guy, that think that the, they'd had people with rifles showing up to that pizza restaurant because they thought kids were being held in the basement for satanic rituals. You can't have all of those people on your side and not have to answer for them. So no, you will be held to account for that shit because you fucking supported it. You supported it in the people that you voted for. You supported it in the people in the media that you, that you encourage. Like, no, fuck you. You can't just say, like, oh, it's not fair. You can't stereotype almost like that. I mean, you guys have, like, no, fuck you. Of course I will. Like, it's part of your movement. It's arguably the defining features of your movement. The defining features of MAGA Republicans are, are fucking QAnon and Seth Rich. Like, yeah, of course I'm going to hold you to account for that. What the fuck? You think you're just going to moonwalk away from that shit after four or five years of being a literal fucking fascist death cult? You guys are fucking crazy. Fuck no. No, you, you don't just get to, to walk away from that. Like, that doesn't represent us. He did represent you, and you chose it, 100%. You elect, they elect your, your elected representatives. Your number one fundraiser in the Republican Party right now is, I think, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Like, what the fuck do you want me to say? Like, Jesus Christ, it's just a minority. The only minority is the minority of fucking functioning cells left in your brain. I don't know where the fuck you guys smoked it all off to. It was crack or meth or, I don't know what Republican, oh, cocaine is the Republican drug of choice. <sighs> Twenty three percent of Republicans believe Satan worshiping pedophiles control the US government. Twenty three percent. You read Glenn Greenwald's tweet. Go look Jesus. Go look and you'll see the whole mindless liberal pack making this point. LOL Elon claimed there was government involvement when Taibi Tybee admitted in tweet 22, there is none. Now look at Tybee's, is it Tabby? Tybee's tweet, he's saying there's no evidence of foreign government involvement, not US. Wait, what? Although several sources recalled hearing about a general warning from federal law enforcement that summer about possible foreign hacks, there's no evidence I've seen of any government of, he, is, can Glenn just not read?